everyone and welcome to Stan the Wine Man TV. I am your host, Stan Rattan, and this is the Blue Collar Wine Show, where I help you spend your wine dollars wisely. Well, this is going to be a fun episode because one of the things that I like to do is take wines from great vintages, in particular Bordeaux, and buy inexpensive red Bordeaux and tuck them away for a while to see what happens. It's not a huge investment. In fact, all these bottles you see right in front of me right now, they're all under $13. So, I find a great vintage, I find a fairly decent producer, these are people that I've had experience with in the past, and I grab them and I tuck them away in my uh, cellar and wait to try them. So we're going to see, these are all 2012 and older. So they're not super old, 8 years and under, but still, they're all under $13. And it's kind of fun to see how that is going to pan out. Will these guys age? Now, I have more than one of these bottles. So this is kind of fun for me because then I can see, can I let it sit a little bit longer? Should I drink them all? You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, just for a second, we'll talk about aging wine. Now, I don't know how many of you have thought about aging wine. I mean, I, you know, first of all, you have to have a fairly uh, consistently cool place to store your wines. In fact, wines can get really cold. It won't hurt them necessarily, but don't ever let them get warm. Warm is not good for wines. And we're talking about, you know, don't let them get close to 60 degrees or higher because then they will not age very well. I've actually had wines in my cellar that almost, it was almost freezing in, in the garage where I kept them, but none of it uh, hurt the wine. So that's something to keep in mind, a cool place Something around 55 or under would be perfect, you know, to age those wines. So if you have a spot like that under your house, wherever you can do it, you know, and you feel like aging some wines, uh, you know, go ahead and do it. But there's some things you have to keep in mind with aging wines. It has to have a, a nice balance of acidity, tannins, and fruit. If any one of those things is out of balance, like it's too high in acid with not enough fruit or not enough tannins, it's not going to age well. Tannins are really a key in aging wines, but they have to have the fruit, because if you don't have the fruit, then those tannins will take over and you get kind of a dusty, nasty, woody wine in the end. So you have to have a nice balance of acid, fruit, and tannins. And when you have that good balance, uh, then you might be able to age that wine. Unfortunately, in our day and age, people, winemakers make wines to uh, be drunk right away because that's what people do it, the average consumer polishes off that bottle of wine within an hour after they get home. So, you know, that's the way it's done. But I know some of you out there are, you know, you're into wine. That's why you're watching this program. I appreciate it. And we're going to get started right off the bat. I don't want this to be too long. So this is the um, Chateau de Costis 2009 Bordeaux. It rolls in at $10. And I think when I bought it, it was 9 bucks. So, you know, Costis has been a good uh, producer. Their recent vintage, not so much, um, so you have to go vintage to vintage. Uh, it's not hard to find out if there's a good vintage, just get online. Nowadays it's so easy, just pop and say, is 2020 or 2019 a great Bordeaux vintage? So this is a Costis Bordeaux. I bought it for nine uh, nine dollars, it's now, I might even bought it for eight, just to tell you the truth. It is ten dollars now, still very inexpensive. Uh, still good color on this wine. It's a 2009, so what? It's 11 years old. So still good color. I don't see any a lot of brown on it. Let's see what we get on the nose. Get a lot of cedar, which is interesting. Cedar. Red cherry. And red currants, yes. So let's see what we get on the palate. Very curious about this one. Now Meg. Meg. My friend Meg in London, if you're watching this, I might have to spit, just telling you. I'm probably going to spit all these just because. You know what? I am impressed with this wine. Good cedar notes on it. The wood's still there. Now, now this doesn't have any more time. If I'm going to drink this bottle, I'm going to have to drink it soon. Because the cedar notes are overtaking the fruit. I'm still getting good current. A little bit of earth. Um, it 
It's starting to fall apart, but it's still not bad. I think you could drink this wine easily. Have it with some spaghetti, with some uh, steak. Solid wine. It was only eight bucks when I bought it. I think I bought it for seven ninety nine, and it's eleven years old, and it's still holding up okay. In another year, that wood will take over. So the tannins there is good balance. At one point, maybe I'm two years uh, too far into it, but I still think it's a solid wine. Yeah, a little thin. If I were to grade this wine, I'd give it a C. Uh, it's an average wine, but it's still interesting that it held up so well. 11 years, $8, $10 now, but that's still nothing. Kind of fun, right? So I couldn't find a price on this, but I guarantee you it is around 10 bucks because I remember this wine. This is the Chateau Bone Côtes de Bourg, uh, 2009. And this, like I said, is around 10 bucks. Oh, by the way... I'll show you this label. You can still get the Costis. I'm just saying right now that the vintage we're on right now is a little bit too lean for me. But anyway, nine great vintage. This is also 2009. And this says what's on the back. It's 45% Merlot, 45% Cab, and 10% Malbec. So there you go. Sometimes these are scary, you know. You don't know what... I think my best experience with older wines was when a friend of mine opened a 47 Petrus and the stuff was just unbelievably good. 47 Petrus. Unbelievable. All right. Let's see what we get on those. Good color. Still good color, not brown. A little bit more brown than the other one, but not too bad. A lot of leather on this nose. Get, uh, leather and currants, but prominent leather with uh, subtle current notes and a little bit of earth coming through dirt. I mean, we get a little interesting kind of a eucalyptus thing, which is not common. Actually, not eucalyptus, excuse me, pencil lead, which is a very common uh, aroma, aromatic in Bordeaux. Yeah, this is. Uh, a little brown in, I'd say a little more brown than the other one. Let's see what we get on the palette. A little licorice coming through too. Totally lost it. It's it's just nothing there. Mostly wood. A lot of earth. No fruit. You see when you age a wine, you want some of that fruit to come through. Now Bordeaux aren't uh, known for a ton of fruit, but I'd like to see a little bit more than that. Uh, didn't hold up as well as uh, the Costis on the 2009. Still not terrible. I mean, this isn't bad. Um, I don't think you would enjoy it too much. I gotta quit the ums. I'm starting to hedge that way. I don't want to go there. I gotta get better on YouTube, not um, 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 um. Anyway, uh, this is, you know, just a very earthy, uh, no fruit. Pencil lead comes through big time on that one. Really tight on the back side. I, you know, there's good structure on this wine. And I'd be tempted to age it more, except it has no fruit. And so, that, it's lost the thunder on that. If I were to grade this a 2009 Chateau Bon, I'd go C-. minus. It's certainly not bad. It just doesn't have the qualities you're looking for in a good Bordeaux. But it's still got, it still has structure, which is really 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 cool now we're going to go to another classic vintage make sure I get this in the right order oh got another 2009 here sorry I didn't have them lined up right what's wrong with me now this girl rolls in at $12 this is a Chateau Bluen 2009 Bordeaux and 12 bucks once again I remember these wines I, I remember uh, getting excited about them when I tried them. All of these I tried first before I tucked them away. Certainly something you can do at these prices. So if you want to have a little bit of fun, find uh, talk to your local wine merchant, talk about, uh, just do a little research on online and see what how these vintages are, vintages are, and maybe store a couple away. I know 16 was a great vintage, 15, 16 Bordeaux are really good. So you can, so the color on this is, uh, 
pretty solid, pretty dark. Um, not a lot of uh, brown on this one. This is also a 2009, $12. Let's see what we get on those. Instantly get cedar and pencil lead. That's the first two things I get. And some currents coming through on the back end. Let's see what we get on the palette. Now this is a nice one. Um, I like it. Good balance. Now this doesn't have a lot of fruit either, but there's that kind of nice plush sort of feeling of currents coming through. Uh, surrounded by cedar notes, uh, pencil lead, a little bit of earth, dirt coming through on this, which is very, very typical of Bordeaux's. I like this one. In fact, I think this one is ready to drink now. A little wind out there, a little wind action. Nice red flower notes. Good texture in the mouth. Good balance. I am impressed with that wine. I, think I showed that to you already. Yes. So the Chateau Bleu in 2009 Bordeaux. $12, guys. Now this is this is a chance for you to taste a, a, a wine that's 11 years old. That's not a long time, but it's still 11 years. For $12, and watch how it develops. This one's developed nicely into a nice, solid little Bordeaux. I like it. I like it. I'm going to go B plus on that. I like that one a lot. Okay, now we're on to the 2010. Nine classic vintage, ten classic vintage. Um, this is the Chateau Moratine 2010 Bordeaux. This is... doesn't give anything on the back. This one didn't have it either. But Bordeaux's tend to be a, a combination of Cab Merlot, Cab Franc, Petit Verdot, Malbec. These are the main grapes. Not Malbec, Petit Verdot. They're doing a little bit of Malbec in Bordeaux once again, as you saw on that one label. So, good color on this one as well. This is the youngest of the bunch. This is 10 years old. Good color on that one, solid color. 10 was, 10, 2010 was a great vintage in Bordeaux. I get like old leather, currents, a little poop coming through, a little bit of barnyardy coming through, which is also very typical of Bordeaux. I get a little bit of that pencil lead on this one as well. Let's see what we get on the palette. Solid Bordeaux, good structure. Not as much of that good texture, fruit mouthfeel as, a, as the blue one, but still solid. Lots of pencil lead on this one. Um, very tight tannins. Uh, I don't think you could age this one too much longer. There's not enough fruit there, but I think for a Bordeaux, this is a solid example of a Bordeaux. Still has good acidity, a little bit of that kind of funk comes through on the mid palate into the finish. Long finish is making my mouth water. This baby needs food. This needs a steak. If you had a good grilled steak, like last night, if I had this wine with our, we did some steaks, would have been perfect. That acidity. So this is one where the acid is a little stronger than the rest of the wine. Good tannins, but the acid is definitely a prominent part of this. Uh, it had good balance when I first bought it. I think the balance is there. I'm going to go B, B plus on that one. I still think that's a good example of Bordeaux for $13. Now let's move on to the last one. This is the Chateau Camarsen Bordeaux 2012. Another great vintage. 11 wasn't so hot. Some of the 11s are coming out now, but yeah. $12. Rinse. This is fun, you see. And, and if you don't have a lot of money, I know, you know, especially now with this Corvid thing going on, God, it's just really, really hurting a lot of people, and I feel bad for them. I really do feel bad for them. Good color on this one. Nice and dark. So this is only eight years old. A 
Oh, nice. Uh, get a little bit of spice on the on the nose. Definitely currants. Definitely leather. A little bit of red flowers coming through all as well. I like the spiciness. A little bit of baking spice action on it. Eight years old. Not that old, really, necessarily. Let's see what we get on the palette. Chateau Comarson. Nah, there's nothing there. It's it's still got good. It's still good. It still has, it still has good structure. The tannins are tight, but there's no fruit. I mean, there is no fruit on this one at all. Real wood, a lot of wood, a lot of dirt. Um, there's acidity in the backside of this one. This one will not age. Um, I thought it was very good when I first bought it. Should have just drank it then. But that's the idea. That's the experiment. See where they'll go. And then you can learn from that and, and try other wines. Do your research, ask your wine guy, come down to the store, ask me. Uh, it's fun to age wines. You don't have to age them a super long time. I see some people with these huge cellars and they can't get to their wines and they go bad. Don't do that. Please do not do that. Unless you're a collector and you want to sell them later, don't do it. Just age them a little while. It's a fun thing to do and you will be rewarded. I think we have a couple really solid ones in here. I'm going to go C minus on this, uh, maybe even D plus C minus, because it just didn't have anything. And, you know, it's not bad, but just nothing there. Thanks for taking a little time out of your day. I know these are hard times, really tough times for a lot of you. Um, I work in a grocery store. I'm working. I know a lot of restaurant workers that are out of work right now. I feel bad for them, but, you know, we've got to protect each other. We've got to be safe, and hopefully things get rolling here soon. We'll just take our time and make sure we get through this nasty virus. Okay? Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you enjoyed this episode on Aging Wines. You keep watching, and I'll keep helping you spend your wine dollars wisely.